Hi. Welcome to Journey to the World with J.P. Olson. Lord, I come. Lord, I, come. I, confess I confess. Bowing here. Bowing here. I, find my rest. I find my rest. Without you, Without you Lord. I fall apart. I fall apart. You're the one. And you're the one. That guides my heart. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you, Lord. We want to welcome you today. Good afternoon, Geraldine, and those of you who are joining me. Good morning, Hannah. Good afternoon, Hannah. From the UK, I'm so happy that you're joining us today. And those of you who are joining us from near and far, we're so happy that you're here. And if you're here for the first time, this is my Wednesday, 30 minutes just passing through. Give you words of inspiration and encouragement. Just passing through. This, where grace is found, Lord, that's where you are. And so, good morning, Phyllis. Good afternoon, at least. <laughs> Hi, Wilma's from Wisconsin. Phyllis from Tennessee. As you know, I'm, I'm on the road traveling, and now I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, and... My dog is here with me. He's traveling with me, so he may start making noise for y'all just to know that he's here. <laughs> Hi, Kelly. Good afternoon. Yes, we need him more than ever. So I just thank those of you who are taking time out today to join me. Uh, we want you to know that we want you to stay connected with us. Not just come for the first time and leave and not come again. We want you to join us on our Instagram, our Twitter, our Facebook, our YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Yes. And then we have our uh, Monday. Hi, Carol from Middle Tennessee. Good to see you here from Monterey. And we also want you to go to our website and sign up for our inspiration reading that goes out every Monday. Every Monday morning, it goes out to a large database, Words of Inspired by God. So go there and sign up to receive our um, Monday inspiration reading. Hi, Aileen from Sierra Leone. Great that you're here. Those who are joining us again, and then the music you're hearing, that's my own personal CD. You can download the full CD at my website, or you can go to Amazon and iTunes and just download a track. And so we're working on new music before 2022 is out. But in the meantime, here are the songs. And then if you would like to give, we have four ways that you can help us. Four ways to give is on our website. It's right here, Geraldine, have it listed. Consider sewing into our ministry. And those who have prayer requests, we love to pray. So each Monday, the intercessors come together in their own time. And we petition these requests, and we petition to our Father. So send us your prayer requests as prayer warriors and intercessors intercede on your behalf. Once again, we love to pray. So I think I get everything covered. Uh, next month, we'll be starting up our Bible study again. I have that information. And then we have Giving Tuesdays. Giving Tuesdays are coming up. But we will be giving and sowing into the ministry, asking you to as well. So thank you very much. I thank you for joining me today. You didn't have to. This is in the middle of the day. Uh, my time is, is, I'm on the Eastern time, so it's 2 o'clock, my time. Hi, Wendy from South Africa. It's just a blessing. Prayer request for your sister to find a place. Okay, Hannah, we're going to be praying for her. Uh, definitely praying for her and praying for each of you here. Once again, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm in the, the beautiful state, Peach State of Atlanta, Georgia. And um, next week, I think I'll be coming to you from Mississippi. But anyways, we just thank God that you're here, that you took time out today to join me. And um, so I'm going to get through it because I want to be finished in 30 minutes, but I want you to be inspired. And once again, I want to welcome those of you who are here. I see that I have a couple coming in from New Zealand, uh, one from Australia. Thank you, Jill. And I have another Wendy on, Wendy from South Africa and Wendy from New Zealand. Uh, I want to thank you, Pedro, who is coming in from Puerto Rico. So I thank you, and I thank those of you who are joining us. Hannah is here from the UK, United Kingdom, by way of Jamaica. And uh, so we thank those of you who are joining us from the various nations. And I thank all of my, when I say my local people, my, my, my people in the states, from the state of Wisconsin and Tennessee and, and the various areas that you're joining from, uh, Eileen from Sierra Leone over in Africa. So we're great that she's here. And so I want to welcome you again. How to tell if your struggles are from you from God or from Satan? How, how do we tell that? You see, the war is over. There was a war in heaven and that war is over, but uh, Satan is still fighting 
in the spiritual realm. He's trying to do his thing out in the atmosphere. Uh, but God has control. So how do we know if our struggles are from, from our own foolishness, things that we've done? Yes, yes. Thank you, Carol. I'm praying that the Holy Spirit moved through me. I'm always welcoming in the Holy Spirit. I was listening to it before I came on. And I pray that the Holy Spirit moved today. I pray that you can grasp something from the message. You see, the question again is how to tell if your struggles are from God or Satan. And why do we struggle? Well, the war is over. The enemy of our souls would love nothing more than for each of us to believe we are fighting for victory and not from victory. When Christ died on the cross in our place to pay the penalty of sin, uh, the war was over. This is a spoiler alert for him. We won. We won. And God has the whole world in his hands. We know that song and has made a way for us to spend eternity with him. Hi, Juliana from New York. So why do we struggle? Well, number one, because we still live on earth. We have a real enemy. He's not fake. He's not a fictitious name person. He's not a myth. He's real. And as long as we are alive, we will have to deal with him. Because the Bible tells us that. We're going to have struggles, trials, and tribulations on earth. We have nothing, but what we have to realize is this. We have nothing to fear. If we are living our life in Christ, we will always be more powerful than anything that comes our way. We just don't understand and realize our power. We forget sometimes that we have authority. But the Bible is clear that we aren't to be ignorant of our enemy. That's why sometimes they say, keep your enemies close. Keep them close. You, know, know, you need to know their characteristics. You need to know their behavior. But we will always be, remember, stop thinking that Satan can just overtake you in anything. We are overcomers. And we will always be uh, more powerful than anything that comes our way. When we're living in Christ, we will. But the Bible is clear that we aren't to be ignorant of our enemies. Well, we know that the devil is an angel with a God complex. You, you, you see people walking around with all kind of complex. The devil is an angel with a God complex. So you may think of God and the devil as equal and opposing figures fighting each other from two different sides. Much like the cartoon image that we have of a devil and an angel perched on someone's shoulder. But see, that was the mistake that the fallen angels, that was, that was the mistake they made as well. Because as you heard me speak this probably last Saturday that was, or the week before, that um, Satan took a, a group of angels with him that had fallen to earth. That's where he was. He was the first one to come. And then the rest came. Because they just, they saw Satan with God when they were created. And they just assumed he was beautiful than any of them. And he was, it seemed like he was equal to God because God had him there with him. And he was over the, the throne and all of that. He watched it for God and over worship and the music and everything. They just assume, they assume that he was equal to God. And so they wanted to follow him. He, he, he recruited him. He's still recruiting today. I tell people, don't, he's out recruiting today. Hi, Celine from Georgia. He is recruiting today. Satan is out recruiting today. And he recruited then. And those angels came right on the earth with him. And they've been delegated to control all of these nations they're going back and forth to. Because they thought that Satan, Lucifer, the devil, was equal to God. And he's nowhere near equal or nothing else. But we have to be clear and we need to be clear. The story of God and the devil isn't one of two gods fighting each other. Let's, let's get that clear. Let, let's get understand. It's not two gods fighting each other. The devil is an angel with a God complex. He wants to be God. His power and authority are only in his possession because God has allowed him to continue for the time being because he knows his time is limited. God has given us free will with hopes that we would do what's right. But so many of us have been so disobedient that the free will haven't really served good. So God choose, he, he has allowed Satan to continue for the time being. His days are numbered, his daytime is limited, and he's running rapid around the world. Hi, Georgia and Tennessee. He's running rapid around the world, acting a fool, cutting up, as we say, causing chaos. Because why? 
he has a little bit more sense, I say, than we do. Because we think, as you often hear me share, we're going to be here the next second, the next 30 minutes, the next year, the next day. We don't know this. But Satan, who knows that his days are numbered and his time is limited, and know that we are living truly, even though they've talked about, Paul even talked about Jesus returning and doing his time, but we see what we read in Revelation and read throughout the Bible, we see that we are so close to that time and Satan is acting out in the church. He's there. The Antichrist, they're in the church everywhere. And he's acting out and he wants us to think that, that, that all these problems and struggles we're having are not from him. But we need to understand who they're from. But we need to be clear that the story of God and the devil isn't one of two gods fighting each other, okay? The devil is an angel with a God complex. His power and authority are only in his possession because God has allowed him to continue for the time being. The devil is a bald-faced liar. He's a liar. He's the father of deception. The only way to know if it's your enemy is to understand his exact characteristics. And you'll know your enemy. Your enemy's whole purpose in life is to get you to believe a lie about God. He, he wants you to doubt God's word. That's what got Adam and Eve in trouble. It started in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. He li his lies sound something like this. God isn't that good. Or God's not telling you the whole truth. The lies always go deeper. God made a mistake when he made you. Or God is not going to help you. You made such a mess, he's not going to help you. All grounded in lies about God. And one of the greatest and most powerful lies always begin with your identity. It sounds like you can't do it, or you don't have what it takes to do it. His words are wrapped in fear, anxiety, and shame. He wants you to walk around in fear. That's what the devil wants you to do. And the world is so full of phonies and fakes. And it's, it's a miracle to see a real soul. Because everything is deceived. If you try to order something online, you don't know what it is. If somebody calling, you don't want to call from a private number, an unknown number, because they don't want you to know what it is. Everything is full of deception. And yes, this has a lot to do with the struggles. The devil is an accuser. Our enemy loves to accuse us. Hi, Adele from Massachusetts. Our enemy loves to accuse us. He know, he's known as the accuser of the brethren. That's in Revelation 12. So once we begin to live in spiritual confidence, he uses another lie. Who do you think you are? Often trying to accuse us of pride and arrogance because that's what got him in trouble was pride. He loves to use accusations to stop us in our tracks. He used love to confuse us. Because you see, anything that God sends us is coming with clarity. It's not coming with confusion. It's coming with clarity. But the devil, accusation, tries to stop us in our tracks. Our enemy, see, an accusation is claiming someone is doing something wrong. That's an accusation. We're glad that you're joining us, AD, Day Day. Our enemy will never stop. He will always go further hoping we believe the lie. You are wrong or you were made wrong. Accusations are dangerous. Why? Because they will always distract us from our real purpose, which is to live in the abundant life Christ died to give us. The devil is a thief. In John 10.10, 10, it depicts our enemy's exact characteristic. It says the thief comes only to kill and steal and destroy. Do you think his mission has changed? His mission has not changed. He's still doing that. The word steal in the Greek is the word klepto. You know, we heard the word kleptomaniac. A person just steals all the time. They steal so much it just comes natural for them. You call him a kleptomaniac. Well, the Greek word for steal is klepto. It's where we get the word kleptomaniac, which means someone who steals for the thrill of just taking something. When the enemy operates in our lives, he is stealing from us as well. We may not realize that it is happening, but eventually we feel the sense of loss and see that what is rightfully ours has been taken from us. If we want to walk in daily victory, we must remember that the enemy comes into our lives as a thief. He gonna steal your health, your children, your marriage, your finances, everything, your spiritual journey. He gonna steal it all. 
That's what, he's a thief. He's going to try to steal it all. The devil wants us to sacrifice. In John 10.10, 10, it uses the word kill. But it doesn't mean what you might assume in John 10.10. 10. The word kill in the Greek is thuo, which means to sacrifice. God's not coming through for you. That's what, that's what Satan will tell you. Or you are not going to experience it all. Of the enemy smoke screens. When the enemy comes to kill, he's hoping you will sacrifice everything God has given you. He tells you that you have waited too long, believed for too much, and seen nothing happen. You might as well throw in the towel. The crazy thing is we believe his lies. We believe them. And then we start thinking that our struggle is something we've done. Because what? He's a deceiver. He's a thief. He's a liar. He's an accuser. So he have us thinking that sometimes I struggle. Don't stop saying you struggle from God. Do you think God want to see us struggle? Sometimes we make a mess of things. True enough. And we suffer the consequences. As if we're not going, supposed to suffer the consequences. God does not cause us just to suffer and struggle. That's not God. Just to struggle. But many times, sometimes God have to test us. Because we're, we're, we're our, this unbelief, our doubting his word that Satan has caused us to doubt. And then we do things that we struggle behind it because we made a mess of something. We, that's when we know why we're struggling. Because of a misstep or something that we did that we should not have done. And we struggle behind that. Those are things that we do to ourselves. But thinking God just make you struggle. Oh, I don't know why God take me through the struggle. Stop, stop, stop lying on God. Stop lying on God. And then sometimes when you've done something, you say, oh, the devil got me. Now stop giving him too much credit to put on his resume that he don't deserve because you know you did something. Sometimes we know right from wrong, but we'll do something just because that's what we want to do. And we make a mess of things. And then we go through a struggle. But we know that that's something that we did. But stop allowing the devil to think that God got you struggling. God doesn't have you struggling. Sometimes he, God have to like them. He have to test us, take us to a testing of things. But when he does the testing, it's something that he has great for you. God got to know that you're ready for the battlefield. You're ready for what he has for you. And so sometimes you go through a testing, but we don't want to, we don't want to suffer at all. Jesus suffered every day while he was on earth. I had to make sure my dog wasn't chewing up my purse. <laughs> but anyways, the devil want us to think everything we're doing, God is making us suffer. Or we're saying the devil is making us struggle because we've done something or we just think it's wrong. But we, sometimes we do give him too much credit and we need to stop giving him so much credit. And, and, and many times God is going to use us. And people don't know what God is using us for. He knows that. And sometimes we're being tested. On our faith that God needs to know. He wants to know. He already got. He knows. We don't know. And then we start walking in doubt. And walking in unbelief. But the struggle. Is not from God. God don't have you struggling. <clears throat> he doesn't want to see his children suffer. But we do things. They cause these situations on ourselves. We do things. And then it's the consequences of the, our actions. We have to suffer because of the consequences of our action. The enemy, the enemy, Satan, who is never stops. And, and it's, it's funny because when you look at it, and people are so naive, and, and, and I, don't, I, don't, I don't even know if I want to use the word vulnerable, but just naive to the fact that, okay, well, they want to start comparing Satan and God. Well, Jesus, God doesn't slumber, sleep, nor slumber. Well, Satan doesn't sleep, nor slumber. He wants you to think he is so equal to God. Well, the God is, God is everywhere at all times. And don't you dare try to say Satan is everywhere at all times. Because he's nowhere near I'm not anything. He's I'm not present. He's not omnipotent. He's I'm not omniscient. He doesn't know everything. He's not everywhere at one time as God. He's not. He delegates people. He delegates evil people. He delegates, I call them his little minions. He delegates them. 
and directs them and points them and the fallen angels. He delegates them. You're right. There's no comparison. There's no equal to God. But he has a God complex. So he perpetrates. And people that have complex, they perpetrate to be like somebody else. And so people say, well, 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 God is this and well, Satan is that. No, Satan wants you to think that. He'll tell you, God is not a forgiving God. He's not going to forgive you for that, but I forgive you. Well, who are you to forgive anybody, Satan? I won't, I won't remind you of what you've done. No, he won't because once he's destroyed your life, he's gone on down the road to destroy the next person. He's angry at us and he's bitter and he's mad at us because he will never be forgiven, but we will. God is a second chance God, a third chance God. He's a perpetual, ongoing, forgiving God. But Satan will never be forgiven. And he hates us for that. So he wants to make us think that all of our struggles are from God. All of our struggles are from God. But he puts up a smoke stream. You know, he will try to steal. And, and sometimes the devil may not have to steal very much from us, especially if we're already, already giving it to do him, okay? See, as I go back to John 10, 10, good evening, Lee. You write data. He has no parent, no power, and there's no comparison. In John 10, 10, it uses the word kill. As I mentioned, the word kill, the Greek word is, is stuo, which means sacrifice. God's not coming through for you. You're not going to experience it. Thank you for the hearts and the life. That's what Satan said. He used his smoke stream. But when the enemy comes to kill... He's hoping you would sacrifice God has everything God has given you. He tells you that you have waited too long, believed too much, and seen nothing happen. God is not going to come through for you. You haven't seen nothing happen. We, we read about a lot of the prophets and people in the Bible that God used, and it took them forever to get to that. 14 years for this, and, four, and this for that, and 20 years for this, and 30 years. And look what all Joseph went through. And David. And, and look at the time frame. God don't operate on our time. But he'll say, you waited too long. What you say, Julian, what we call suffering, God getting our attention to pull us to him. Yes, he is. I love it. That's why I say I love you all to talk back to me because I got some people on here that know how to talk back. And that's why you often hear me say, I just keep saying, Lord, just keep his love keep running after us just to get us to act right. And we just think, oh, we just struggling through this. No, you're not struggling. He's not struggling. You. He's getting you to do what's right. But the enemy... He wants you to believe that no, nothing's going to happen for you because you waited too long and, and it seemed like nothing is happening. And that's when we start getting in God's way. You might as well throw in the towel. The crazy thing is that we start believing his lies. Well, I guess it's not going to happen because it's been this long and God haven't done anything. Well, I guess I just give up. The devil may not have to steal very much from us, especially if we're already giving it to him and giving it away. Living spiritually alert. You see, to keep Satan from taking advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his schemes. That's the word. Paul points out, we're not ignorant of his schemes. I have often heard the phrase, ignorant is bliss. Well, if you ever wanted to know what that is, ignorance is bliss suggests that if I don't know something, then life is more comfortable, relaxed, and peaceful for me. But ignorance is not a godly way of living. I tell people I'm allergic to ignorance. I just say, when you just do stupid things, it's ignorant. When you, when you know better, and for now, people should know things, whatever it is to know, because I said to Google, Google, we used to have the almanac. My son was telling me last night, he said, Mama, remember when you bought us an almanac? And we used to, we asked you something, you used to go look it up in the almanac. He said, now people can just get on Google and Google everything. They got it so easy. They should, they should know everything because it's available. But the, but the phrase ignorance is bliss. It suggests that if I don't know something, then life is more comfortable. It's more relaxed and peaceful for me. But ignorance is not a godly way of living. It's not. My, the word of God in Hosea 4, 6, you know, you love the, I say it all the time. Say my people are, are suffer for the lack of knowledge. For the lack of knowledge. And then in the same verse it says because they reject it. So a lot of times we don't have to be ignorant about many things. But we reject it. Being ignorant of the enemy's schemes only leaves us vulnerable to his tactics. He is real. And he's a schemer. He's an accuser. And he perpetrates. Being spiritually illiterate doesn't mean the enemy will leave us alone. It means we are more likely to make critical mistakes due to a lack of full understanding. 
Ignorance will hurt us. Ignorance will hurt us. Thank you for the likes and the hearts. And leave us confused, dejected, and deceived. Because Satan is what? The father of deception. And what I just said a few minutes ago, whenever God sends you something, whether it's a word, person, place, or thing, it will come with clarity. You won't be confused. You just have to understand and say, Lord, let me not mishandle what you've given me to do. Our struggles are not, uh, you will know when there's a struggle that God has sent. God not sending you a bunch of struggle. He sometimes like a struggle, sometimes it's like it's testing. And he wants to bring us, as Juliana mentioned, he wants to draw, draw us closer to him. The, the song says, draw me nearer, nearer, O blessed Lord, to the place where thou hast died. Draw me nearer. And he wants us, he wants to draw us near to him. But Satan wants us to believe that God got us struggling and he doesn't have us. He's the author of confusion and people are the distributor of it. They, 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 um, she said he is not the author of confusion. God is not. Satan is the author of confusion and people are the distributors. They distribute their confusion. God going to give you some clarity. You just stay in there and just pray and just trust him and step out on faith. No, because he's not going to definitely not going to send it to you like the way you think. Does he ever? God sends it where you, you be like, I, I don't quite understand this, Lord. You just keep what, trusting him. Because he wants you to step out on faith. He wants you to trust him and believe what he's telling you, what he's doing for you, what he's directing you. It's not going to be mass chaos, chaos and confusion. That's the devil. Chaos, always. Drama, confusion, hatred. Just hate, hate, hate. So no, yes, does God put us through te some tests? Yes, and sometimes he's, he's launching you. Your biggest test is where he's launching you. But to make you just suffer and struggle all the time, why am I constantly going through this struggle? Well, look at what you've done. See if you've done some things that you should not have. But then the devil will play with your mind. And as I say to you often, he's a mind regulator on his turf. You see, we can say, well, God is a mind regulator. Yes, he is. The devil likes to make, regulate your mind on his agenda and his turf. He, he, he wants to keep people depressed. He wants to keep people suicidal. He wants to keep people confused. Yes, you're right, Aline, absolutely true. And we do, we do. We, we say today, would you say, Lee, Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, help us with our unbelief. Because the devil will set you up to set you up. He will set you up to set you up. That's why you have to be careful. That's why you have to be discerning. That's how you pray and ask God to order your steps. To give you wisdom. To increase your discernment. Because the devil is cunning. And he's, as I, he's made himself comfortable in the church. And we got antichrist running around everywhere in the churches now. Because during this time. This season. Some of us will go through some struggles. But don't you dare keep saying, these are struggles God putting you through. Clean up your life, your prayer life. Clean up your what you're doing. And walk by his word and be obedient. And be aware of the devil's schemes and tricks that will have you struggling. He will have you struggling, doing things that you shouldn't have done in the first place. So you struggle through your finances. You struggle in your marriage. You struggle through your health. You struggle through your children. Because you're not doing it God's way. We're not doing it His way. But when we do it His way, those struggles will be so minute, will be so small. Those challenges will be so small. But the enemy, he, he wants you to struggle in all those areas. And then he wants you to blame it on God. But if we had done it God's way the first time, we wouldn't have to even be talking about it. But that's okay because God said, that's all right. Come on back. And I'm going to lead and guide you. Come on back to me. Come back. Draw near to me. Ye who are weak and weary and heavy laden and your dad, your father, Abba, will give you rest. And that's my message for today. That's my 30-minute message for today. Stop letting the devil think that you think everything you're doing is a struggle from God. And many times, sometimes there are struggles of your own. 
because of things you've done and the way you lived and, and, and all the things you've allowed to happen. But that's okay. God will get us through those struggles. Because what did he say? I will never leave or forsake you. You think I want to see my child? You think you want to see your, those who are parents, your child struggle and suffer? No. You try to give them wisdom. You try to give them good advice. You try to draw them back. That's what God does for us as children. He don't want to see us suffer. So he draws them back. And he comes after us. And he comes running after us. That sheep. Well, the 99 is here, but the one is out there. I got to go find it and bring it back. He's struggling, but I'm going to help him get up on his feet again. And that's what I'm here to tell you today. Know who the struggles are from. Be aware of the enemy's schemes and, and him having him doubting you and, and playing in your mind and giving you those thoughts like, oh, it'll never, it'll never happen. It, 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 I've messed up. I've waited too long. He'll give you those thoughts. Thank you for the, larks, the likes and the hearts. But he's a liar. He's an accuser. He's a deceiver. He's a thief. We know what he is. We already know. It's not like we don't know. Thank you, Ali. Thank you. It's not like we don't know. See, it'd be different if we didn't know. Then we could say, well, I got tripped up. But you didn't get tripped up because you already knew that he's a liar. He's a thief. He's a killer. He's a destroyer. We already know what he does. We already know if it looks good. Everything that good is not go. We better, we better go to God first and say, wait a minute, Lord. Is this, I may be struggling with this because this doesn't look like what it should. It doesn't feel like, but I want to ask you, I want to talk to you because, you know, Satan to have it looking so good. Because he's slick, he's conny, he's slick. So thank you, each one of you who have taken time out today. It's 2.32, I want to get off. I mean, 1.32 because I, I, 30 minutes is it. I'm, I'm staying, sticking to that. I just want to thank each one of you for being here with me today. I'm going to be back on Saturday with a strong message that God has given me. I want you to share with your friends and invite your friends. If you know people who are just lost or straying away, who are going through struggles or people who don't go anywhere, uh, invite them to come to, so that we can be a blessing to them and that we can give them words of encouragement. And they can hear, I want you to learn God's word. It's not just coming here just to get a hoop. Or just to get words of encouragement. Yes, words of encouragement. But I want to give scriptures and I want to back up what I'm saying through God's word. So that you'll know. So when people say certain things, you say, no, uh-uh. That's not what God's word is saying. You're welcome, Celine. So thank each one of you again. And I'm going to be back on Saturday at 9 o'clock a.m. I'm going to meet you here bright and early. All cheery and smiley face. Thank you, uh, Celine from uh, Perry, Georgia. Uh, Lee from uh, Ghana. And uh, Janice Finney from Memphis, Tennessee, Eileen from Sierra Leone, uh, Juliana from New York, Adele from the Boston, Massachusetts area, uh, Wilmos from Wisconsin, and, and um, who does I see here, um, uh, Hannah from the United Kingdom, from the UK, and we have um, Carol Ann from um, Middle Tennessee. Uh, I had some others that, but I want to make sure I can get everyone, Phyllis from Memphis, Tennessee, yes, uh, Georgia from Memphis, Tennessee. Thank you for Geraldine and, and uh, the different ones who I want to make sure there's on here. Pedro from Puerto Rico, Wendy from South Africa, and Wendy from New Zealand, and Jill from Australia, and Hannah again uh, from uh, over in the UK right now by way of Jamaica. So I want to thank each one of you uh, on here. Caroline, I guess I said from Middle Tennessee, Wilma's from Wisconsin, and those who have joined me today, Hannah, all of you who have joined me, uh, the ones from the various locations have joined me. I thank you so much. I thank all of my international uh, 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 people and, and friends and, and our viewers that come and, and the part of the family. Uh, you all are part of our family. All over the world and all over the nation, we are family. And so... Um, I, I would put that, put that put that song on. I'm not going to put that song on in there. So she just got through preaching, and now she's playing a secular song. We are family. So so I'm not going to put that song on. I'm just going to tell you thank you for joining me again. Thank you for being here. Um, and I want to see you back on Saturday morning at nine o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. I'm going to put this song on and let it play as we leave. But I want you to have a great week. Um, bless each one, one of you with love and happiness. I pray that God carry you through the week. Um, if you're going through anything, I pray that God bless you. God heals you. He restores. 
Hannah, we're going to be praying for your sister. And uh, each one of you, I'm going to be praying for you. I pray for all of my viewers who come. I just pray and say, Lord, give them favor. Bless them, Lord. Cover them. Cover their life, their hearts, their family, Lord. Cover their finances, their children, if they have children, their home, their spiritual journey. Cover them, Lord. Protect them and keep your angels around them. I don't just say that for me. I say it for my family. Who are you? You're my family. And, and, and we have our biological family. And we're from the family of Jesus Christ. And I pray for each of you. I pray that you have a great week. And I pray that we see each other. Jesus delay his coming. I pray that I see you on Saturday morning, bright and early. Jehovah is your name. Thank you for the hearts and the light. He's a mighty warrior. He's great in battle. Thank you, Kelly. Kelly was on. I'm sorry, from Wisconsin. I don't know if Sharon was on. I didn't see her. Um, but I wanted to recognize Kelly was on as well. Jehovah is your name. Thank you again, Geraldine. Jehovah is your name. This is another song from my CD. He's a mighty warrior. He's a mighty warrior and he's great in battle. I want to thank each one of you again. I don't take it lightly and take it for granted that you're going to be here. I'm grateful to see you here. Every time I come, I'm great to see the family. He's a mighty warrior. He's great in battle. Have a blessed week. God loves you and I love you too. Goodbye.